What's up guys, Kyle here again, and today we are checking out something truly groundbreaking in the world of high gain guitar gear. A 5150 plugin. This is the amped block letter from ML Sound Lab. Let's do it. All right guys, hope you're doing great out there today. If this is your first time here at my channel, my name is Kyle and what I do is I take all sorts of awesome high gain related guitar gear, I record it with a simple setup and I give you the unprocessed audio on your end. And sometimes that high gain related guitar gear even includes plugins. Now, one of the most common things that I see when a new plugin is released is complaints. Because a lot of those new plugins are 5150, 6505 based. And while I don't get the complaint aspect of the argument, the internet just loves to complain about things, I do understand that basically being exposed to a different version of the same thing over and over again can be a little bit boring, for lack of a better word. But one of the cool things about getting different versions of the 5150 plugins from different companies is that not only do you get different takes on the same amplifier because they all will sound a little bit different depending on the capturing process and the modeling that is involved with it, but you're also getting different snapshots of different amps. If you guys have been following my channel for a while, you will know that you can stick four, five, six 5150s in a non-OSHA approved stack and switch between them basically in real time and even with the same tubes in them and the same settings on the amplifiers through the same speakers, sometimes you're gonna get drastically different results because these amps, much like any other electronic item, are prone to what is called component value tolerance. Now, we're not gonna dive into all of that nerdy stuff today, but the reason that I bring that to you is this. All of these 5150 plugins are not going to sound the same for all of the reasons that I just mentioned. And the reason that I agreed to check out the Amped Block Letter plugin is because I'm always curious on a slightly new or slightly different take on one of my favorite amplifiers on the planet. If you're a connoisseur of 5150 tones, or if you're just somebody who needs a simple, stripped down, easy to use and understand plugin that's going to sound good and is not going to break the bank, the Amped Block Letter is going to be at the top of my recommendations. So with all of that out of the way, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna jump into this plugin, we're gonna check out some tones. I'm gonna play a couple different guitars. I do want to let you know that this is a sponsored video. My good friend Nico over at ML Sound Lab reached out to me, asked me to share this with you guys here on the channel. I am being paid for this demo to share with you guys. I just wanted to be transparent with you guys, but just know you're gonna get my honest thoughts and opinions as you always do. Keep that in mind. All right guys, so if you haven't already noticed, things might look a little different because I recorded this yesterday and forgot to hit a switch in order to actually record the audio. So we're gonna go ahead and do it all over again because I seem to enjoy wasting my own time. So the bulk of this plugin is made up of two different amplifiers with those two different amplifiers being the 5555 and the 6666. Now, because that's going to get extremely annoying for me to say over and over again throughout this video, I'm just gonna call them the five and the six, and I think that you guys will pick up what I'm putting down. So if you go into the amp section here, you've got a lead, a crunch, and a clean for each different amplifier, much like the actual real world amps. But if there's one thing that I am really, really interested to check out on this plugin, it is the clean channel. And if you don't know that I'm joking, you must be new here. But between the two amplifiers, if you look, there is really not much difference. The 666 has a slightly cleaner look to it, but all of the controls are exactly the same because these 5150 and the 6505 
amps are exactly the same. And if you still want to dispute that in 2023, I have a number of different videos where I essentially prove that wrong. But these two amplifiers do sound slightly different because of that component tolerance issue that we mentioned at the beginning of this video. So I thought it was kind of cool that Miko, instead of just taking one or the other, decided he wanted to take both and kind of capture what he liked about each amplifier and the differences between his two particular 5150s. So we will switch back and forth between the amps. If you guys have never had an ML Sound Lab plugin before, I'll do a quick run through of the features on this because they're gonna be the same between pretty much all of the ML Sound Lab amped plugins. You've got a tuner which mutes your signal, which is nice and it is very accurate. It works just fine. If we go over here into the pedal board, these are all of the effects pedals that you will get with pretty much every ML Sound Lab plugin and they definitely do the job nothing crazy no guesswork here moving on to the cab section we have the ml proprietary amped cab section here and i know that they have breakout plugins for these as well you get two different impulse responses a mega 41291 greenback which is a 90s greenback speaker which according to many gurus is the best era of the reissue greenback speakers so nice choice miko and then we get the mega 412 oversized which is your standard mesa 412 v30 oversized speaker impulse response so you should be very familiar with how that sounds at this point if you're not what the hell are you even doing here We've got the option of multiple different microphones. We've got a 57 over here. We've got a 121 and then each different impulse response will see the same microphones, but obviously they will give you a different response on different speakers. If I have one critique about this plugin or some of the other ML plugins in general, I think that the impulse responses provided with the amplifiers are kind of limited. From a business standpoint, I totally get why ML does that because they have individual impulse response suites and if they give you too many impulse responses then there's no incentive to go ahead and go buy the impulse response suite i get it but i really do think that at least maybe one more different speaker would be a fair value add and it would give the plugin a little bit more dynamic in order to change the uh change the tones that are change the tones that are included in the box so that's my personal opinion on the bottom right hand corner here we have a little switch that says vorna vorna is ml sound labs uh proprietary dsp or modeling engine it is very very powerful and it's what leads to these ml plugins sounding the way that they do but if you want to turn that off and lessen the load on your system you can do that just by hitting that switch this is the first time i'm using an ml plugin that features that so i think it's pretty cool if you're operating on an older system click that switch and it will lessen the load on your piece of crap computer but we're gonna go ahead and switch that on so we get the best tones, and we're gonna go ahead and see how this thing sounds. Starting with the 555 lead, I have it dialed in as you see here. If we go into the pedal board, I've got my noise gate, I've got my drive pedal on. Here is the tone that I'm working with. <laughs> All right, so it sounds like a good 5150 should, right? Sounds thick and chunky, maybe a little bit less saturated than you are used to hearing with a 5150. Let's go over into the 666 lead and let's see how it compares directly with all of the same settings. <laughs> All right, so between the two, I think that there are pretty noticeable differences. Of course, the gain structure and the overall voicing is going to be the same, but the six has a little bit more of a defined upper mid thing going on, a little bit less in the low end in the low mids. I personally think that the six lends itself a little bit more towards down tunings and the five is better for if you're trying to get a fatter, thicker, less defined tone or if you're in higher tunings where you're going to want that added thickness. But in my opinion, they both sound great. Let's jump into the presets. Let's check out Miko's block letter. <laughs> All right, so pretty light on the low end. I believe that Miko tunes a little bit lower. Let's go into Modern Chunk. 
All right, so we've got some mid scoop going on. We've got some low end pulled out and it's pretty bright up top. Let's head on over into the 666 lead and we have 57 prevails for the preset. <laughs> We've got some other stuff in here for the presets as well, but honestly, I kind of want to dial in my own thing. And what I want to test is the crunch channel on this because traditionally the crunch channel on the 5150-6505, not my favorite in the world. It's a little bit too thick. A lot of the top end aggression is kind of rolled off, but let's see if we can kind of dial in a cool tone using this channel. Anyways, we've got the bright switch punched in. Here is what we have with the settings as you see them. All right, so honestly, it sounds pretty good, very defined. One thing I'm noticing about this plugin, this 5150 plugin versus other 5150 plugins, there seems to be less saturation overall, and there seems to be more of a top end clarity that you actually don't typically find with a lot of 5150 and 6505 not only the amps but plugins that are based off of those amps so immediately i'm kind of finding that that sets it apart a little bit from the other ones so not quite as much the wall of sound that you're used to from a 5150 we got a little bit more definition and string clarity which i think is pretty cool all right so what do i want to do i want to go into the pedal board i want to click that drive on let's get some saturation going we're gonna need a little bit more from that noise gate there from that bear noise gate there i am definitely from pennsylvania and let's go ahead let's kick that pre-gain up I gotta be 100% honest, guys, that is the best tone that I've ever gotten out of a crunch channel on a 5150-6505 amp or plug-in. That actually sounds, I kinda like that better than I like the lead channel, if we're being 100% honest. Let's hit the same thing, but on the 5 or the 5150 version. <laughs> Man, I gotta say, I think that this is where it is at on this plugin. On the five, a little bit thicker, a little bit high mid, top end roll off. I personally think that the crunch channels on both are sounding great. Let's go into the impulse response though, because we have not messed with that yet. Let's go ahead, let's get that green back in the mix. Let's kick the mix on this over to the center so we're getting equal parts of both speakers. <laughs> I do not hate that whatsoever. I actually think that sounds quite good. Greenbacks tend to be a little fizzy and a little brighter up top, a little bit more scooped. Let's go in and let's see what a ribbon 121 sounds like on this greenback. <laughs> Finally, let's try a Dynamic 57. Let's pull it to the outside to darken it up a little bit. But we've got a great tone going on here. What happens if we use a guitar with like PAF style pickups? How will this plugin react? Let's find out. All right, guys, Heritage H150 with the Seymour Duncan Antiquity pickups. Ah, oh, still sounds nasty, really digging it. Let's try same settings on the six. And again, everything that I said about the differences between the two still applies. It is still, the six is still brighter, still much more mid forward, not nearly as thick on the bottom end. Let's try a guitar that is tuned to drop C and see how it handles the lower tunings. All right, guys, Balaguer Espada 
feral pickups. These are a mid output pickup. This thing is tuned to drop C. <laughs> And again, back over to the 555 crunch. And then I want to check out the lead because as we get lower, I think the lead is going to come into play more on this plugin. Dude, night and day difference. The top end, the high mids are really, really rolled off on the 555. Five, that's a lot of fives versus the six. I'm actually kind of digging the chunkiness of this, uh, maybe just a little bit more. Let's go a little bit more presence. Let's pull the low end back just a tad. <laughs> Oh, yeah, the, I don't know, man. This one just sounds a little bit meaner in that drop tuning. Let's go over to the lead channel. As you can hear, we've got a lot of gain going. Let's pull the pre-gain back. Let's get some more lows. Let's get a little bit more resonance. And let's pull that presence back just a tad. Felt like something was crawling on me. <laughs> Sounds nice and beefy. I like the way that that sounds. We have thickened it back up again. Let's go over to the 666 lead. Yeah, man, those differences, very, very noticeable between the two. Last but not least, let's seven string this thing. Still sounds great though, nice and thick, uh, getting a good amount of string definition. I have a feeling the 666 lead will be even more so. Dude, that 666 lead for the lower tunings is where it is at for me. I actually think that sounds really good. Last but not least, let's hit that crunch channel one more time because I'm kind of curious to see how this will do with a thicker sounding guitar. I personally think that that sounds great. I'm finding all sorts of really, really useful settings on this plugin. No big surprise because it's based on a 5150 and it's really hard to make a 5150 sound bad. So with that being said, back to yesterday, Kyle. All right, guys, that is gonna do it for me today on the ML Sound Lab Amped block letter. What did you guys think about this plugin? Let me know down below in the comments of this video. If you guys would like to pick this plugin up for yourselves, it just launched two days ago and it is on introductory price for about 30 euro, which is like 34, 35 bucks or so. Really, really good deal in my opinion. You're getting everything that you need and nothing that you don't when it comes to a dedicated amp plugin. Not sure how long that sale is going to last before it goes back up to its 50 euro standard price. So just keep that in mind if you are kicking around the idea of picking this thing up. Thanks so much for watching guys. Kyle here again. We'll see you next time. You know what this wall is missing? Another ant. There we go.